it's just like ultimate uh, demolition derby, you know? Just push as fast as you can, you know, hit as many people as you can. The intensity is the biggest comparison because you can't be afraid, just like in rugby where you have no pads, you can't be afraid to make a big hit. Same instance in our sport. You can't be afraid to make that big play. It really provides a lot of different benefits for the athlete. I've been playing for 10 years now. I love staying active, you know, I got hurt right after high school, you know, so I was playing football there. And uh, to come right into this sport and, you know, it's full contact as well is, yeah, man, it was great. I, I loved it. It got me motivated right off the bat when I first got hurt. I found out about this wheelchair sport and I was like, I want to play. What do I have to do to get better from right now to get onto that court? Because I was in a power chair. I had a neck brace on. It was everything. I can remember telling my father, Dad, get this neck brace off because I want to get out there. From individuals who are newly injured, and they're really looking at this as an opportunity to engage in sort of the rehabilitative process, relearning how to live life, uh, going through the process of, of getting ready to compete and um, managing their chair and their equipment is really sort of the, the gateway to living an independent life, all the way to those who are looking to make the Paralympics, and this is sort of an opportunity to train to where they can break through at the most elite levels. There's only so much you can learn in a hospital or in a therapeutic place. Uh, these guys all have life experience. And uh, it's just, it's amazing to be around these guys and other people that are going through the same stuff that you're going through. Each athlete's given a, a classification of disability and that determines their functionality, um, their injury level. And so some athletes with less function are paired to be teammates with athletes with higher function in order to make a balanced lineup. Only quadriplegics can qualify to play, so some of my friends that are paraplegics, amputees, uh, they are jealous because they want to play, they want to go out and bang and hit as hard as they can in a wheelchair and they don't get to. I just get to say have fun and play basketball. In the 70s and 80s, paraplegics and amputees played wheelchair basketball as well as quadriplegics. However, the quadriplegics were not particularly competitive due to the physiological limitations. So they created their own sport, modified it um, quite substantially and came up with the sport of wheelchair rugby. That's awesome for the university. I think um, the more adaptive athletics that uh, they acquire, the better. Uh, I know teams um, across the U.S., different colleges that actually have teams already. There's, there's eight universities right now that have wheelchair basketball and at a really high competitive level who are rostered teams. Um, and there's only one other school that has wheelchair rugby, so we're really looking to be that second school and we really would like to be the preeminent school in wheelchair rugby. Um, Mike Cottingham's actually started the one at the University of Arizona. I'm very excited for him to be here and to develop you know, new players and give, give the individuals that have a disability you know, a chance to play. A lot of times disability is perceived as fragility and so this sort of hyper aggressive sport is a great juxtaposition to that that says the athletes aren't fragile. They, they, can, they can get beat up a little bit. It can be physical. It's okay to be competitive. It's okay to be aggressive. And I think it breaks a lot of those barriers and those stereotypes.